Welcome. In this short video I'll be showing you how to use the Pinnacle Studio app on the iPad to put together a simple video. Now before you start it's worth noting that you should put all your assets together. So in our photo albums you'll see that I've created a folder called Demo Movie and in that folder is all my assets I'm going to use in this movie. A couple of screenshots, an end title, a start title and of course the video that I've shot using my iPhone of an interview with Matthew McAllister. Alright, so they're ready to go. So once you've got your assets together on your iPad, open Pinnacle Studio, the application. So you can see that I've already created a demo movie. You can also create a new project just by hitting the plus symbol. Let's open our project. A few things about the interface before we get started. Up in the top left is our library, and this shows us all the assets we're going to be using in our video. Over on the right hand side you'll see the preview window which you can scale up and down with the little arrow in the corner. Down below that is the storyboard. Basically you'll be dragging each of your elements onto the storyboard to line them up in order. And below that is the timeline. There's one movie channel and three audio channels. Now you might ask why I'm not using iMovie for this purpose. The main advantage of Pinnacle Studio over iMovie is the fact that it has multiple audio channels. So you can have sound in your video you can add a dialogue track, you can add a sound effects track and a music track which is something that iMovie can't do. This is the playhead and you'll notice the timeline is down across the bottom. Alright, now the main thing is the assets we want to use in our movie, they're all lined up down the left. We have First up we have videos, then we have photographs, any photographs on your iPad will show up here. If you've got music on your iPad that will show up there as well. Be careful, of, don't use copyrighted music in your videos. YouTube will block it and you will have to replace it. Next one is transitions. So this is the way that one piece of video transitions into the next. After that is montage. My advice, leave montage alone, it's a gimmick. And finally we have titles. You can have motion titles and standard titles. I'll leave you to play with those. Alright, let's get started. Now the basic thing we need to do is to get our videos onto the storyboard. Remember I put my assets into an album called Demo Movie and there is our interview with Matt McAllister. I can either select it and it shows up in the preview window here or I can click and drag it down onto the storyboard and again it shows up in the preview window here. Let's just pl press play and see how that goes. Uh, am I re okay I'm rolling so whenever you're ready. Alright, you'll notice that there's a bit of rubbish on the beginning. I don't want my voice talking before Matt starts talking. So all I've done is press pause. There's two ways I can trim that little bit of video off the front of that. I can either get this playhead to the right point on the timeline, just by back and forth pressing play, getting it right. I can press the razor blade, which brings up the video button. Once I click that, you'll see that what it's done is split this into two clips. There's a four second clip with the rubbish in it and then there's the longer clip. Now because I don't want that first bit I can just delete that bit of video. Now that video of Matt starts straight away. Okay, um, so this, uh, this project is about bakery. That's one way to trim the beginning of a video. Now another way to do it, I'm just going to hit undo and undo once more and there we are back again. I'm still back at the same spot the other way that you can trim the beginning or end of a clip is simply with these trim notes at the beginning. So here is the trim point, it's this little yellow box at the beginning. I've got the playhead there, I just bring the trim point up to the playhead and there you go. If I press play, the same thing happens. Okay, um, so this, uh, this project is about bakery apps for industry. Alright, so we've just cut that little bit of rubbish off the beginning of that video. So we're getting there, we're getting started. Now the basic idea is that I want to put a title at the beginning and a title at the end of this video. I can't see the whole video at the moment. If you ever want to see your whole movie in the window, you can double tap in the timeline and you can see that it brings the movie all into view. Let's put a title at the beginning. I just go into my photographs, I go into my albums, in my demo movie folder I have a start title which I just click and drag down to the storyboard and I have an end title which I can click and drag down afterwards. Now I've made these graphics in a graphics program however you might just want to use PowerPoint. You can make a PowerPoint look like your beginning and end titles and then save your slide as a picture 
and then import that into your iTunes. That's a simple way to make titles. All right, so let's press play and watch the transition from the title to Matt. So this is playing. Okay, um, so this, uh, this project... All right, you can see that that's pretty rough. It just cuts. That's called a, cut, a jump cut. I want it to be a nice, smooth transition from the title into the video of Matt. So I'm going to rewind a little bit. I'm going to go over to my transitions, which, remember, is the little lightning bolt. Now, for the transitions, I would not use any of the other ones. I would only use the first two. The first one allows you to crossfade between one piece of video and another. The second one fades down the first piece of video and fades up the next one. If you're not sure what they do, click on one and it shows up in the preview. Great. I generally use the crossfade for 95% of my edits. I would recommend steering away from the other gimmicky ones. So, to use a transition, just click and drag it down between the two pieces of video that you want. Now if I press play, watch the transition. I'll make the screen bigger so you can see what's going on. Okay, um, so this... Uh... Okay, you can see that Matt came in nice and smooth this time. Alright, so here's Matt and he's beginning to talk. What we want though is to introduce Matt. There's no way that you know who this person is and you should always put a title on that person. So here's a simple way to do it. I'm going to zoom in a bit because I need a bit of accuracy. Watch the timeline as I zoom in. You can see that as you zoom in the numbers change in the timeline and it's telling me that uh, it starts at about 4 seconds and goes to 9 seconds, a bit closer in. Alright, see how the numbers changed in the timeline? The more you zoom in, just, just pinch zooming, uh, the more accurate you can be. So I'm going to rewind a little bit. I want my... So what I want is Matt McAllister written across the screen and I want it to appear for about five seconds. So let's press play. Okay, um, One, so this, uh, two, this project is about three, apps four, for five. It's not a bad principle to edit your video when there is a break in the speaking. Matt stopped to gather his thoughts and go on to his next point. That's always a good point to edit. All right, so that's where I want my title to go. I want my title to run up until there and then disappear. To add my title, I need to cut that into a separate piece of video. Remember, I can click on the razor blade, click on video, and again, it's split it into two new pieces of video. I want to put the title on this short section of video here. So I select the section of video, then I go over to the titles menu, and you can see we've got a few motion titles. Have a look at those. I think they're not very nice. I'm just going to use a standard title, and you can see over on the right hand side it previews what it is. I'm just going to click and drag that and all I have to do is drag that onto the video of Matt. Select composite and you can see you get a preview there. Now to edit your text just click on it. Here it is. I'm going to type in the name. Okay. Alright, so there's our title. I want it to appear over the left hand side there. I don't like that font much, so I'm just going to click on that once. Oops, I think I need to double click it. Yes, if you double click the title, it gives you a choice of font. So I'm going to change the font, I don't like that one. Uh, Optima Bold, that looks nice. Is it too small? It's a little small. I'll make it bigger with the size slider. Do I want to change the colour? Maybe I'll make it yellow. Um, yeah, that looks good. All right, and done. Now you can see that title's there. You can still move it around. Something you may not be able to see, underneath that it says Needs Rendering for Accurate and Smooth Preview. Whenever you add a title, you need to render that title before it appears smoothly. Now. I'll show you what I mean if I press play. Okay, um, so this uh, this project is about bakery apps. You can see that you get um, you get a rough preview, but the video does not play. You need to render that video before you can see the full effect. To render a video, the little gear icon on the right hand side. I'm just going to click on that. Now this may take some time. It's rendering the montages and titles within the project. The longer your project and the more titles 
and effects there are, the longer the rendering will take. We'll be back in just a minute when this finishes. OK, and that title has finished rendering. Let's just rewind a little bit. I'll press play again, and you can see the title appear over the top of Matt's video. OK, um, so this, uh, this project is about bakery apps for industry. Um, basically a two-fold process. With OK, so you can see that it went smoothly from the first piece of video to the second piece of video without the title on it. So that works quite well. Next thing I want to do is superimpose a picture. If I just play Matt for a little while longer... Developed a numeracy-based app. So this interview is about an iPad app that Matt has developed. So I want to show a screenshot of that app when he says the word app. So I've pressed pause at that point, and the same principle applies. If I want a picture to appear over a short section of video, then I need to cut that video up into a short piece. So all I'm going to do is with the playhead, press the razor blade and hit video. Again, it has sliced that video up. I'm going to press play for another five seconds, and that's because that's how long I want my graphic to appear. To, uh, to target uh, Two, the three, four, uh, five. That our... Okay, that's probably long enough. Now I'm going to cut that up again. Remember what I've just done. I now have bits of video that run seamlessly into each other, but on this section, I want a graphic to appear over the top of Matt. So I've selected that piece of video, I go up to my Photos album, remember it's in Albums, Demo Movie, and what I want to appear is a screenshot of that app. There it is. So I just click and drag that onto the video of Matt. Now you get a few choices here, replace using the new length, replace keeping the length, or what we want is Picture in Picture. So select Picture in Picture. And you can see that it's previewing what it wants to do. You can either just have the graphic appear floating in the background beside Matt, like a newsreader graphic, or in this case I want it to be much larger. So you can just use two fingers, make that bigger, align it where you want it to. It does take a second or two to render this effect. There we go, I want it a bit bigger than that. There we go. Okay, so that's what I want, and that's all I need to do. You can do a rough preview, just rewind a little bit, press play. In the process, we've, uh, we've developed a numeracy-based app to, uh, to target uh, the LLN skill uh, issues that we have in our trade area, um, but we've also... All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I would need to render that to make it work properly. However, the next thing I want to do is put another screenshot after that, so the same principle applies. Uh, from where Matt comes back, I'm going to press play. Our trade area. One, um, but we've also, two, uh, three, a lot of four, um, five. Okay, so I think that's long enough. I'm going to do the same thing again, cutting the video. So back here, this is where we have the bakery app screenshot. The next section of video, another five seconds, I want to put this screenshot from the app on it. So I'm going to do the same thing again, drag it onto the video, picture in picture. Again, resize it. This time I want to completely block Matt, I don't want anything else of Matt showing. And this is the way you can put in a photograph or another piece of video. This actually works with other pieces of video as well. So I'm just going to... it takes a little bit of fiddling around. Here you go. Alright, so there's another screenshot. Come on. There you go. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm just going to quickly render this. So I'll press the render button. And again, I'll be back in just a second. So having rendered that, let's just look at the whole movie. Remember, if you want to see the whole movie on the timeline, double click. It shows you the whole movie now. Rewind to the beginning, press play, and you can preview your whole movie. So here's our title with the okay, transition. Um, so this, uh, there this is a superimposed is title over Matt. Industry. Um, basically a two-fold process. We've, uh, we've developed a numeracy-based app to, uh, to target uh, the LLN 
skill uh, issues that we have in our trade area, um, but we've also uh, researched a lot of different um, apps to aid in the delivery and the assessment. Okay, and that's the basics of editing with Pinnacle Studio. I'm not going to go into more detail, uh, but this gives you the basic idea of how you add transitions and effects to your video. Now, once you're happy with your video, I would keep working on that. Once you're happy with your video, you can share it in a number of, number of ways. So up in the top right-hand corner, there is a share button, and it allows you to share in a few ways. First, you can use a Box account. Box is an online storage uh, service. Similar to Dropbox, you'll need an account to use that. Uh, you can choose to export directly to YouTube. Again, you'll need an account for that. Similarly for Facebook, you can export straight from the application to Facebook. Uh, you can create a video file. You can create a copy to email. However, keep in mind that the quality of the final video will be very low because it'll be keeping the file size small for email. And finally, you can also export the whole project if you have a copy of Pinnacle Studio on your desktop computer. However, in this instance, we're going to select video file and create a new file. You have a number of quality settings. I would always recommend using the highest quality setting. And this may take some time. Again, the longer your video, the more transitions, the longer it will take to render the whole movie out as a file. So there we've finished rendering our video and you'll notice that you, it says you can find your video in your Photos app. Alright, so we're done for now. Uh, go back to your photo album, look in your photos and you'll find that the video is the last item on your camera roll. So there's our movie now complete. Now you can use iTunes if you want to put it onto your desktop computer. If you want to put it up on YouTube, consider making closed captions for it and there's a tool called Amara that will help you to create closed captions for YouTube to make your video accessible. So don't forget to look on YouTube for more tutorials about using Pinnacle Studio.